Welcome everyone. Hello. all of these new faces and all of my old friends here as well and I was kind of worried about the weather but you know the rain doesn't stop the show so we have a great uh, presentation for you and a lecture uh, by Kyra Hicks um, I met Kyra at church found out she was a quilt maker and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so great because who makes quilts anymore? Another Mary over there. Carol Hatch, we got quilters in here. So um, Kyra agreed to uh, exhibit her quilts here at the photo gallery and I'm really, really excited. And um, without further ado, here's Kyra. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, we thought, okay, if it rains, that means 10 people less. You know, and then if it's cold, that's another 10 people less. <laughs> um, but it's quilts, and so everyone comes out for quilts. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, and also, thank you to Felicia, who really does support our community here by showcasing not only her calligraphy, but by rotating other artists and authors in the community to showcase their work. And she does it with such a loving spirit. So thank you, Felicia. So um, I wanted to spend, if I can, just a few minutes talking about the quilts. Is that okay? Yes. All right. How many of you are quilters? All right. Hi, hey, Amani. There's some quilters here. How many of you are painters? No. There's one. Here we go. Um, other kind of artists? Love it, calligrapher, yes, all right. Um, isn't it wonderful to be in a space that has color and creativity and joy? So what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is share with you a story about my quilts. I have been quilting since I went to the University of Michigan. Go blue. Go blue. <laughs> um, that's Joy Calloway and she has one of my very, very first wall hangings I ever made as a student at the University of Michigan, Joy owns. Um, so I had a black feminist thought class there and we had to do a paper and I thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll do a paper about black quilters. How easy can that be? Um, and I went to the library there at the University of Michigan. I did some research. I cited some sources. What I didn't know when I got my paper back, which was about a C. <laughs> and what I didn't know is that my professor had been the dissertation advisor for somebody who did their dissertation on African-American quilters. <laughs> so she knew the sources that I cited were not the very best sources. I didn't know that at the time. Um, so I got a C for not really knowing my topic. Um, I did send her, I eventually did a lot of research on African American quilting and I wrote a book called Black Threads, which is a comprehensive look at African American quilt history. And it cited over nearly 2,000 references. When it came out in hardback, I sent my professor. <laughs> change your grade. No. <laughs> Here's another person from Michigan, so she would know. Um, so how did I get started quilting? I actually didn't know how to quilt. I took um, like a seventh grade summer school sewing class where you make a pillowcase, you know, four block pillowcase. I made a skirt and a jumper with pockets that I still have, um, but never a quilt. And I remember two quilting things that were really impactful on my life. One was going to the California African American Museum, which is in Exposition Park, and they had an exhibit of quilts. And I remember walking in there, in the lobby, and there's this huge quilt, probably this size, but it actually is larger, of a woman, an older woman, 
in a screen door on her front porch. So she's on the front porch, but behind a screen door. And there's a chicken on the top of the porch. Don't ask me why, but there she is. And I never knew a quilt could do that. I didn't know a quilt could have a person on it. I didn't know a quilt could speak to you. I didn't know that I could want to get an egg from that chicken. That's how real the fabric and the cotton was to me. And eventually I did meet the quilter. His name was Michael Cummings. And he is, Michael Cummings, yes. Um, he's a native of Los Angeles, although I didn't know him at the time. He now lives in Harlem, and he is a marvelous, marvelous quilter. Um, and I will tell you that Michael eventually, maybe four years ago, gifted me that quilt. Oh. And you think, ah, I had like boo-hoo, you know, snot crying when I opened up the package, because it was totally unexpected. And, he, and I went up and visited him in Harlem with a friend of mine from Kansas City. And I was like, you know, a, he was like a rock, he is a rock star. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, can I see that quilt? Do you mind if you bring out the quilt? And he brought out the quilt and I wrapped myself in it mm -hmm. and have a picture of it with me wrapped in it. And he said, if anything happened to him, I'm the only one who he knew loved that quilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hoping for is you see these quilts, you begin to see how people fall in love mm -hmm. with quilts. And I'm sure in your family there's somebody who quilts and you love the fact that big mama, grandmother, and so and so made this quilt for me. Mm -hmm. And you love it until it's tattered. Mm -hmm. And you love it until you don't want to show it with somebody and you don't want to show the quilter because it's kind of loved up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. They understand. All right, so I saw Michael's quilt, fast forward at University of Michigan, taking this class, did the paper. I was visiting a friend in Cincinnati, and we went to the Taft Museum, which is a hoity-toity museum, art museum in Cincinnati. And it was an exhibit of African-American story quilts. I walked into that exhibit. I can see it now. I mean, you guys are here with me, but I could see and I could tell you each of the quilts that were in that room. Mm -hmm. Because when you walked into that room, right here was a table, a slanted table, and it had a Clementine Hunter, and she was a folk artist, a painter. Most people know her as a painter, but she was a quilter too. Mm -hmm. And her quilts look just like her paintings, only it's cotton. Mm -hmm. And I turned and I'm like, Clementine Hunter. <laughs> And I saw there was Michael Cummings had a quilt, a small quilt. And then when you walk down that first aisle on the right hand side of the wall, right near the part where you're going to go around the corner, there's this quilted scene of Thanksgiving and all the people sitting around the table and all the good food for Thanksgiving, the turkey and the yams and all of that in fabric in this quilt by Faith Ringgold. That exhibit had such a profound effect. And for those of you in the arts, you never know when somebody sees your art, when somebody sees your calligraphy, what impact it has. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in that exhibit and I saw the Clementine Hunter and I saw Michael Cummings um, and I saw this Faith Ringo quilt, I'm like, I wanna do this. I wanna be on the walls. And I knew that as sure as I'm standing here, that I wanted to be on the walls with these artists. Okay, it was a slight detail that I didn't know how to quilt. <laughs> Just a detail. So I did start with wall hangings. Because they're the size of a pillowcase and it's kind of little and you can finish it and I don't know how to draw. Okay, so that's another detail. But I do like words. And I like words and I like pictures together. And so when I was in that, um, Black History, or excuse me, the Black Feminist Thought class, four of us, Joy, Lisa, um, Dee, mm -hmm. Guillory, and myself, every month there were these four black women and we went to breakfast someplace mm -hmm. to make sure that we got through the University of Michigan's MBA program, sanely, and we would have breakfast. And so I made a quilt and each block had one of us and what we wore, right? So Joy was a Delta, and so hers is red with some pearls, you know. Everyone had, <laughs> everyone had their, what they wore at the breakfast. 
and I made four of them and everyone got one and that was my very first wall hanging that was also this part of my deliverable for that project so I don't think she gave me a C on the quilt I think it was just the paper that she gave me. <laughs> um, fast forward a little bit after the University of Michigan I was employed by Hallmark Cards Okay, I know you have not been in a card shop lately, except for Joy. But I'm gonna to explain to you how my quilts are kind of like cards, because I worked at Hallmark Cards for seven years. Think about the last time you bought a card. You walked into the Hallmark Card store, and you walked down the aisle. You picked up a card because you were attracted to the art. It was that, because you don't want to get an ugly card, right? So you were attracted to the art, and you picked it up. You bought the card, because of what it said. Whether it said something about the recipient who was gonna receive it, whether it said something about you and how you feel about them, or how you want them to feel, you bought it for the words. And having worked at Hallmark for seven years, you can't help but through osmosis to have some of the kind of the Hallmarkisms. What are those? Universal specifics. When you think about it, there are individual artists who create all of those Hallmark products. Some of them I just know, and they're, they're friends, they're friends today. But they've created something that literally thousands of people across this country purchase because of universal specifics. And universal specifics says, I have a very specific thought or feeling, but I'm gonna communicate it in such a way that everyone understands. If you are single, and you're looking for a man, Universal Specifics says single black female praying for a single black man to share my quilt. It's my feeling, but a lot of people could understand that. A Universal specific says something like, and Tracy, who I have not seen since we graduated from Howard University a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> When Tracy came in and she saw this quilt, what did you say? That's me. Universal specific. Me. And this quilt, for those of you who can't see, says she believed there was more. Mm -hmm. And there is a woman who steps out of the quilt, mm -hmm. going to get something, something beyond what was mm -hmm. keeping her boxed in. Mm -hmm. Universal specifics. Mm -hmm. And so I would come home when I was in Kansas City, and depending on how I felt, I would just write it. Um, I worked on keepsake ornaments. Um, if you used to buy keepsake ornaments, I worked, I was the marketing manager for keepsake ornaments, or marketing strategist. And so I got to help, des not design, but say, what will be the ornament? Be the body of ornaments, which was kind of cool. You know, I got to see the Disney one, the Star Trek one, before you guys did. Um, and I know, we got to know what the movie was coming out before it was, even a glimmer in the public because we had to create the ornaments such that when the movie came out, the ornaments were there. Mm -hmm. so cool. I, it was so cool. I cannot believe I got paid to do that job. Mm -hmm. um, but being at Hallmark really helped reinforce this thought of pictures and words and blend it together. Being a black woman, um, it's just my story. I've had other quilts that are not here. I've had political quilts. Um, when We've, in the news, um, many of you might remember Anita Hill when that happened, the, the hearings, Lonnie Guineer when she was um, the Civil Rights um, Department, and Dr. Joycelyn Elders, who was the Surgeon General, who had something to say, and I thought was burned at the stake. This is Lonnie Guineer, um, Anita Hill, and Dr. Joycelyn Elders burned at the stake. And so I did a quilt with a black woman in a fire and she had a, 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 an American flag wrapped around her. And it says, um, dare I trust the American flag to keep me warm. Kind of today. Let's just substitute some of the names. And that's still feelings today. And that quilt is owned by, um, in New York, um, the Museum of Arts and Design. It's owned, um, it was purchased a while back. Um, when I was at Keepsakes, we had Christmas ornaments and we also had the Barbie Christmas ornament. And my manager at the time said, oh, let's do Black Barbie. And I'm like, no. When we can't do Black Santa Claus, 
black angels for Christmas, you know, a black crush, we can't do Barbie. That's not, in my community, Christmas. That's a decoration. Um, but I was talking to my manager, so I need to still keep my job. <laughs> um, so I came home just being angry and, and also meeting with the Mattel people. And I knew that if Hallmark did a black Barbie ornament, it would sell in the millions. I knew that. But it wasn't the right thing to do. But as a quilter, I was able to come home and take a design of the very first Barbie doll, who was in the black and white swimsuit when it first came out. I made a black one in that black and white swimsuit and put with the Barbie logo the best that I could recreate it. And it says Barbie, um, America's doll. But painted behind her, repetition <coughs> the whole way down says, Black Barbie has no name. Black Barbie has no name. Black Barbie has no name. And so I could use quilting and fabric and cottons to scream. I could do it to have joy. I could do it to be ambitious. And I can do it, I found later, just to have simple warmth. Mm -hmm. The quilt that you see here, um, I, I mentioned the, the Sisters at Breakfast quilt I did with Joy and the, the women at University of Michigan. I did a number of wall hangings. I, friends would get married. I would do wedding <coughs> wall hangings. Um, a friend of mine, her daughter was christened, and I didn't too cheap to buy a gift. So at the christening, I'd sketch what everyone was wearing and then did the scene of the baptism. Oh, wow. And Christian is now like in grad school. Um, and when I go to the home, you go to the home, the wall hanging is in frames, which is like, wow, for me. Um, but a, one of my mentors, Carolyn Maslumi said, I need you to see big because I can't exhibit a wall hanging. Somebody will come in a gallery and snatch it. And I'm like, but I don't see big. And she's like, try. And so my first try was warmth. Um, at the time on Prodigy, okay, I'm dating myself, I know. AOL, Prodigy, got it. <laughs> there was a group of black quilters and we did fabric exchanges. So everyone would get, you know, six pieces of fabric, cut it up and mail it to people in the circle. And by the time everyone did what they were supposed to do, you had enough <coughs> to conceivably make a quilt. <clears throat> and so this is one. A friend of mine in Kansas City, um, her name is Linda Cooper, who's gonna laugh when she sees this video. I remember going to Joanne Fabrics and I was just speaking to somebody who goes to Joanne Fabrics over here, Mary Hicks, who's also a quilter. Um, I went to Joanne's and I just saw that orange fabric that says the word warmth yeah. and it just spoke to me and it said warmth. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't think it was kind of crazy, but fabric speaks, I bought it. And I went to Linda's house, I'm like, Linda, I'm gonna make this quilt that says warmth. <laughs> and you don't know Linda, but Linda could not care about art whatsoever. She's a good friend though, so she was like, oh, that's nice. Um, and she's like, why would you do that? And I'm like, because a quilt is warm and I see this and I can do it. And so I did. Um, and now I remember when a first museum acquired one of my pieces, Linda was like, man, I shouldn't have Laughed at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me just tell you a little bit about the quilts that are here. Warmth is my very first one that I did. Um, since we're over in this corner, the wall hanging there, my sister was a single mother. And when her, when her daughter was born, her first and only daughter, child was born, I wanted Zoe to know that she came from people and that there are people there to support her. So each block is a different generation. So in the first block in the upper left is my sister, Zoe's mother, and her best friend, who was very supportive of the birth. And then it's all the aunts. And so my name and my sister-in-laws are there. And then the grandmothers, then the great-grandmothers, then the great-great-grandmothers, and then in um, Laurel, Delaware, is where some of my family is buried, including the oldest known person who was a former slave, is buried in Laurel, Delaware, with the headstone. Mm -hmm. And so she's there. And I wanted Zoe, who is now 27 years old, to know that she was loved. Mm -hmm. 
behind me is, I'll get to that one later, last, last one. Here, over here, we have um, Prayers and Dreams. This was one of my Kansas City quilts. At the time, I had been with Hallmark Cards for about seven years, and I loved it. I could not believe, like I said before, that I got paid to be there. But being in Kansas City, I am from Los Angeles. <laughs> It is a little small after a while. Mm -hmm. Little grew up in Kansas City. You, yes, yes. You grew up there. I, I mean, nice, but after a while, I remember going to the movies and laughing out loud in the movies. <clears throat> and when I went to work later that week, somebody was like, "Hey, I saw you at the movies. You oh, had a good time." That would never happen in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, but I was getting depressed, and so I use again fabric speaks to me. And so I got fabric and felt and a permanent marker, and I wrote out the prayers and the dreams that I had to try to get out of that sad feeling. And I ended up with 100 plus. So there you see 113 different prayers and dreams. Mm -hmm. Each one is separated into a pocket, and then the pocket is sewn shut. So, mm -hmm. and I don't have, I didn't write out the prayers and dreams, so I don't have anything that says, oh, here it is in a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And Harriet, my grandmother, was like, why did you do that? And I'm like, because it felt right. And nobody needs to know what my prayers and dreams are, mm -hmm. but only the Lord. Mm -hmm. I did sleep under this quilt for several weeks and then got a call from a recruiter for a job up here mm -hmm. in, in Old Town, actually. I accept it and I've moved out of Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> and the little kind of outlier up there? I, um, so in Kansas City, there are lots of, um, what are those called? Like secondhand stores and so mm -hmm. forth. And I would love the laces mm -hmm. that I saw. So like 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And so that's, there's one here and there's one in the single black mm -hmm. female quilt. It's just, um, it is behind, it's on, I'm sorry, it's underneath the flower on the table, yeah. It's just, I love those used things. Mm -hmm. She believed there was more. Again, just, that is almost my most technical quilt, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I don't put points together. You don't see any points together except for this quilt. Mm -hmm. And that is the hardest thing for me. Mary was showing me her quilts and somebody else was showing me yeah. your quilts and your points are like mm -hmm. sharp, mm -hmm. piercing. That is difficult Ain't for me no to do. Ain't no retention. Ain't no retention, she said. That means a thousand So that was my first attempt at trying to do something that is classical quilting where you put patterns together. Um, but because it's me, I had to have words. And because it's me, it's had to have a story. And so she walks out of the quilt. Um, I ended up making two more of those. One, somebody saw it at uh, one of the directors at Hallmark and purchased one and it doesn't have her walk it has her walking out but it doesn't have that side broken it's just a straight kind of traditional border um, and now the um, Michigan State University Museum owns the other one of that um, so prayers and dreams so this one Michael Cummings who I mentioned before Michael Cummings, when I went to visit him in Harlem, gave me some scraps of fabric, including this monkey fabric. Don't ask me why, don't ask me why he had monkey fabric, but he did. And I always thought that was beautiful. Um, my granny, um, Mrs. Melvin, who was like our housekeeper, but she raised me, she was like my second mother. Um, I visited her in, in Jackson, Michigan, where she lived during the summer months. Um, and I asked her how about her marriage because she and Mr. Melvin had been married a long time before he passed away and I asked her about her marriage and what was the secret of it and she said what you need to do is find a man you can talk to and he tells you things and then she went on to say and you tell him things but that was too long for the quilt <laughs> <laughs> so that to me is my granny quilt um, and I just like the whole idea of a magic carpet and flying and um, I wanted to have Michael someplace in, in my quilt. Typically, I don't, I, I pick fabrics for meaning. So the woman is flying, and there are mats 
in this blue background. Mm -hmm. On single black female, there are architectural floor plans in that beige fabric. Mm -hmm. So you have to really be up close on it. But I do pick fabrics for reasons. In the single black female, you will find that there are pairs. There are pairs, there are animal pairs, there are people pairs, there are um, icon pairs, all in that quilt that's on the stool. So I do things intentionally. The last thing I'll say, um, it, people will always ask, how long does it take you to make a quilt? Invariably, it doesn't matter if it's this one, this one, or this one. It takes about three months from the time I have the fabric and say I'm gonna make this to when I finish. Three months, and that looks simple, but it's still three months. And it's like on the weekends after work or something. Um, occasionally I have <laughs> cold and sick. <laughs> That's when, it, if you're a quilter, you know that feeling. It gets really good. And so it's like, come on. Mental health day with, yeah, with bread. So um, I've done that. And I remember quilting. Um, the Million Man March, I remember calling in sick and quilting and watching the Million Man March in Kansas City. Um, I no longer quilt, and so why is that? I no longer quilt now because when I quilted, I was in an apartment and the dining room table was where I quilted. And Questa Benbury, who was a, she's passed away now, but she was a um, historian. And she wanted me to write and do articles and record history of black quilters. And so I started doing that. And there's only so much room on a dining room table. <laughs> there really is. And so I couldn't have fabric and writing materials. It just became too much and it was stressful. And so I stopped quilting. This, in fact, is my last quilt. I believe this was the last quilt. Um, and I've written a number of books. I've written Black Threads, which is a history of African-American quilt making. Um, I love investigative, investigating quilters. And so I've written um, a book about Harriet Powers, whose Bible quilt is at the Smithsonian, and another Bible quilt is at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Um, I've also written about Martha Ricks, who made a quilt for Queen Victoria, and it was that newspaper, that article, and that's her, the press writing about her meeting the queen was a phenomenal story, and that whole investigation. And I want you to know, a descendant of Martha Ricks is here, yeah. right here, yeah. yes. <laughs> and even the BBC has come to interview the family mm -hmm. to talk and write about the quilt and the adventure. Mm -hmm. and, um, the background about Martha Ricks and meeting Queen Victoria. We still have not found the quilt. And before, years before Queen Elizabeth passed away, I did write to her, Liz, can you look in a couple of closets? <laughs> <laughs> I said it differently than that. <laughs> uh, and I got a wonderful letter. Um, the British, oh, they are wonderful. They really will answer you on nice stationery. Can you imagine I got, sta I got a letter back and the words, we would put a stamp. It just said Buckingham Palace. <laughs> um, so quilting has taken me ar literally around the world. I have spoken in Canada. I have had my quilts displayed in many places in Canada and the United States. Um, it has been such an adventure that I wouldn't have had probably if I didn't go to the Taft Museum and saw an exhibit of African American quilting, kind of like these. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Are there any quilts that you have out in the world that you wish you had back? Ooh. For those of you who didn't hear, the question is, do I have any quilts that are out in the world that I wish I had back? No, because if I gave the quilt, it was given in love, and that's okay. Um, the ones that are purchased, no. I mean, I yeah, but I'd love to have the Barbie quilt back. No, but that museum is owned by the, um, I'm just drawing a complete blank on the name of the museum. It's in um, Cooperstown, the Fenimore Art Museum. Sorry about the Fenimore Art Museum. 
they have done a phenomenal job of traveling that quilt. Mm -hmm. So it has appeared in more exhibits mm -hmm. than it ever would have if I kept the quilt. Mm -hmm. So it's been seen by more people. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I want it to be out there. Um, but that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one quilt that's out there that I want to see. For those of you who don't know, earlier this year, the Smithsonian African American Museum purchased one of my quilts. So I don't know when it's going to be on exhibit, but should it ever be on exhibit, trust me, you will hear my scream, <laughs> and you're invited. What's the name of that? Um, that one was, um, it's a voting one. It happened after the presidential election. I, I count. It's called I count. So that's who I'll give me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, um, really fascinating. Could you tell us, you, you mentioned uh, a few museums. Do you feel that museums and art galleries and even um, art schools are giving the respect and the due to quilts and quilting that you think they might deserve? Um, I don't know if I can say it that they deserve, but there is a history there. Mm -hmm. and. There are people who are doing the quilting. How many of you have heard of Bisa Butler? Bisa Butler, mm -hmm. Bisa Butler yeah. came out of Howard Sorry. University. She was studying painting, and it wasn't necessarily working for her. And her the advice I believe she received was kind of like, do something that you feel. Mm -hmm. And so she got fabric. Mm -hmm. And sister can paint mm -hmm. with fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do I feel that? I don't know enough about how textiles or how in academia quilting is practice, but there are people all the time, there are quilting guilds um, on Instagram, there are people doing pheno showcasing phenomenal work that a few years ago within the absence of social media, we wouldn't know their work existed. That I think social media is really doing a lot to amplify. Now whether people buy their quilts, I don't know. And I don't necessarily, believe it or not, I don't go out of my way to sell my quilts. I really don't. Um, I like them, so if, no, if my, my mother's fine with them and I'm fine with them, I am cool. Um, but other people want them to be out there. I would love for them to be around 50 or 100 years. In order to do that, I think they need to be in a museum. And so that's what I hope for my work. Um, but I'm not sure enough what's happening academic-wise. But yeah, there are some cultures that are doing phenomenal work that are being showcased today. Thank you. Uh-huh. Two quick ones. How many total quilts have you done? I knew I should have you counted. You knew I was going to ask you that. I know. And then is there any one place where one could see them all? Any compendium? Any something? So, so the question is, how many quilts have I made? I probably have made 20 like bed quilts. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 10 or so wall hangings. Okay. Where can you see one place where you can see them? At my home. <laughs> you are more than welcome. Make an appointment, but you're more than welcome. Some, how many of you have come over and I pulled them out of the closet? I have a walk-in closet, so um, you, you really are welcome. And that's why I was so thankful for Felicia, for Felicia for helping me get them out of the closet and, and put them up here for people to see. It was like a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. Actually, it is kind of fun. Um, but I am, I have, this, because of the pandemic and so forth, I have had all of my quilts digitized. Mm -hmm. So I am hoping to put them together in a booklet just so that I can see all of them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Would, what would make you or give you the inspiration to go back into it? Are you completely done with quilting? Perfect. No, every now and again I have my, my hand does this mm -hmm. and I start sketching and so forth. Um, part of it is just there's stuff on the kitchen table on the dining room table. And it really does, for those of you who quilt, don't you just need a space mm -hmm. to do it in and have a space? And right now I just don't. And so it would be like I'm not being true. Um, the other thing I'm doing right now is I've been interested the last few years in pop-up books, mm -hmm. you know, three-dimensional mm -hmm. pop-up books, specifically looking at and studying pop-up books with black imagery. Mm -hmm. Aha, when is the last time you saw that, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Um, and so that's what I'm doing right now. The one quilt that I would love to do, and I don't know what that looks like right now, to be honest with you, is what is it like to be in love? Mm -hmm. 
and what with that story. So that when that happens, yeah, I'm gonna stop whatever <laughs> and get out my sewing machine. Because <laughs> somebody in this room wanted to know, it's like she's been to my house, she's like, I've never seen a sewing machine. And so I'm like, yes, no, I have to, really. So, but great question, thank you. Anyone else? Well, I am, oh, Felicia. I just want everyone to know that Kyra's books are over there on the table, if anyone's oh. interested in getting one of her books. Mm -hmm. um, great stories, she's, she's a fabulous uh, researcher on quilts and you can even get her to sign it. Oh. And, get it to them. and I will have to, one of the books is, um, during the pandemic, I worked with um, Francine Haskins, who some of you may know is a Washington DC artist and we republish Dickens' A Christmas Carol. But Francine illustrated it. So there are black, all the characters are black in there, from Scrooge to um, the ghosts, the three ghosts, everybody. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Um, and in the back, I have an essay on almost 100 years worth of productions of A Christmas Carol featuring people of color. Because I wanted to say, that story is a worldwide, universal Universal's specific. Mm -hmm. That story is everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I start from like the, um, not quite 100 years, from at least 1920s or 1940s, radio productions into television productions into movie productions of A Christmas Carol featuring black folks. Mm -hmm. Did you know Whoopi Goldberg wanted to be Scrooge? Mm -hmm. And she actually performed in, in the play in San Diego. See, all that, don't get me started. Okay, anything else? I invite you to look and see the quilts. I know you're not supposed to touch them, so don't touch them. But don't touch them, but you can. They're, they're love. And so if you wanna just see what it's like, it's okay. Yeah. One really quick one. Having recently found an old prayer journal, that doesn't call you to go in and yeah. ever <laughs> no. open them just for you. Never calls you. No, because then I would have to like sew Take it back. Seam ripper. Thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Seam ripper. Yes, for those of you who are quilters, you know what that is. Okay. And it's never the same, right? You can rip it, but it is never the same. No. I do have a question. Yes. Um, when you develop, for example, this quilt right here, um, I, I imagine, tell me if I'm wrong, that you came up with what, you know, you, you had something you wanted to say, which you just mentioned, but how do you come up with the visual of interpreting what you want to say? Sure. So she asked, how did I come up with the visual? I can do that in two seconds, well, four seconds flat. All right, Hallmark cards, right? Everyone has Microsoft Word at home. So instead of 12 point font, this is about 250. So you just print out the words and cut them and that's your pattern. Mm -hmm. um, the bodies that you see here, I draw them on the back of what? Hallmark, greeting, or Hallmark gift wrap paper. Mm -hmm. It's as long as you want it to be and it is kind of wide. And I can put it up on the wall and draw. If you flip over Hallmark, and it could be other brands, but I just happen to know that Hallmark um, gift, uh, gift wrap paper has grid lines. Mm -hmm. And so in my sketchbook, if it's three inches and I need it to be three feet, then one inch is one foot, there's a grid line, and I can kind of sketch it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to draw, but it always comes together. Um, I just like how I put together fabrics. So I think that's something that's just unique to me. Mm -hmm. The colors that I use that somebody else wouldn't because their color palette is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I will lay it out literally on the floor. I will say it's gonna be this size and get tape, masking tape and put it on the floor. And then everything just goes on the floor. So I know um, that it's not gonna go larger than that. And it just comes together. I don't know how to be in that space. But mechanically, Microsoft Word, I'll mark gift wrap paper. <laughs> so if you get it on sale, you've got a deal. Carla, can you talk to me about shipping? How do you ship your work to wherever the requests are made? Yeah. So, so do you roll, do you fold? Um, 
I fold, I know I'm not supposed to. Right. Carolyn Maslumi rolls. Right. Um, and I didn't know that. So mm -hmm. part of it is I just do what I do until I know better. Right. So I fold. Um, when I had a quilt to go on auction earlier this year, an art shipper came mm -hmm. and they rolled it, but they rolled it with like special stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. But otherwise, when you were this, before, I folded, folded, folded it. Yeah. Uh, fold it with, with the cloth. art showing, or fold it with the art the back showing. No, the art is on the inside. On the inside. Yeah, okay. and when they when they're in my closet, mm -hmm. I take them out every now and again and fold them a different way, okay. so that the wow. creases don't stay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I do do that. So that's why you are welcome to come and look at them because <laughs> no, I do not. have to fold them anyway. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And if you can, you should meet Amani, who is a wonderful, fabulous artist in her own right. So yes, she is. All right, please have a look at the quilts. Oh, here's another question. Yeah. <laughs> How are they up there? How, How are they up here? Yeah. Some I understand there are laws and some people do sleeves, but I don't see the stitching through. How do you get through? Sure. Through? On the back of each of these quilts, there there is a sleeve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that the rod just goes through the sleeve. And you do that before you put it together? No, after the quilt is done, after it's all quilted and so forth, you either hand um, sew a sleeve or you can machine, but I do hand okay. when I've done it. And in fact, which one? One of these I had to do for this exhibit. Yeah. Um, Maybe this one I, I had to. I think it was that one, yeah. It was one of the quilts that just, oh, this has never been exhibited. You guys are the first ones oh, to see wow. this one. Like, so I said it was the last one I did. Um, but it didn't have a sleeve. And so I I was sewing and put a sleeve on it. And then um, the wood is compliments of the Home Depot. Yeah. Right off, it is. We went, to, <laughs> we went to the Home Depot, and the guy actually cut them for me, and I sanded them, and that's what that is. So Felicia had her had the gear already on the walls mm -hmm. and we just got or she just got um, loops mm -hmm. to hold it up so it, it was interesting some of the quilts that Felicia wanted for the show we couldn't do it because we didn't have the bars long enough mm -hmm. it was interesting it was like oh wow we were larger it was larger larger than that who knew mm -hmm. who knew so all right there's people here standing and so I want to make sure okay. everyone feels comfortable and have a look at the quilts. You guys, thank you so very much. Thank you for coming.